Hello, Dichut. Hola, bonjour, guten tag. You are very welcome into episode four of Study Hub, the Leaving Cert companion program for Leaving Cert 2024. And now here in episode four, we are really chugging along. And if this is your first time listening to us, I urge you to go back and check out our earlier episodes where we covered subjects like maths higher and ordinary paper one and French. And today we've lined up a busy show as ever. We're going to be running towards the finishing line, I think. So what have we got? Well, it's time for one of my favourites, I have to say. I know you're not supposed to have pets, but I do have one. And it's the busy one, the hour, like us and Ashta. And I'm so pleased, Gul, our Sean Cara Ethna Coin, Lynn Arish, Le Corle Inta Cohort doing. And, you know, just to set the scene, as we know, the Oscar countdown is on, and all eyes are on Killian Murphy, whose dad, Brendan, is a former Gaelic or a former Gaelic uh, kicker. And he gave a wonderful interview, an exclusive interview to Radio Nagailtha when the news broke that Killian Murphy had got the nomination. They got the scoop because he likes giving his interviews as Gaelic. And he spoke to the lovely Helen Nee Hay on. On the sale. Oh, yes. Will in Dickie Borgas a tie you got Hundulga Hollywood? Rushinil, like Tony Man, on a Raffalish Rod Fellow, Agasashi Shingabra, Nihir and Skilk, a father. I have to say, I'm one of the many people waiting if Killian, which we think he will do, if he wins the Oscar, we are all waiting to hear Brendan's follow-up interview on Radio Nogailtach with Helen. It'll be marvellous stuff. But we're also going to be tackling the geography paper with Andy Levis from Middleton College. More than 500 earthquakes were recorded in southwest Iceland on Monday, shaking houses, damaging roads, and leading to hundreds of evacuations. The tremors indicate a volcanic eruption may happen in the next few days. A nearby town has already been evacuated. So that kind of topic, we know that, you know, the paper itself is very topical. So that's just, again, just to set the scene for you to kind of get you thinking about the geography paper. But then the careers guru himself, Brian Mooney, will be here handing out the best advice for students facing into the next phase of your educational journey. The what happens next bit after these pesky exams are out of the way. But next, geography. Well, nearly 17,000 students at Geography in the Leaving Cert last year, over 31% of them came out with either a H1 or a H2 grade. So this is a really high value subject and more than ever it's a subject that explains how the planet isn't changing in so many ways so we are delighted that Andy Levis geography teacher at Middleton College in County Cork is back with us this year and joining us from our Cork TV studios Andy you're very welcome into the study hub Good afternoon, Evelyn. How are you? I'm great. So listen, I mean, you know, you and I have chatted before. We know that the geography curriculum, we know it's fairly stable. Thankfully, no big changes, which is great. But I'm going to start by asking you to just go briefly through the duration of the exam, the marks and the number of kind of questions you do actually have to answer, the compulsory bit. Yeah, I suppose it's a a very broad paper. Uh, There's a lot of different sections to it. The first section is the short questions, where there are 12 short questions and which you have to answer 10 of them. There's a number of different topics that can come up in this. Any and every topic can come up. Uh, so you have to answer 10 out of 12 of those. It's a nice way to kind of warm up and get into the paper, I suppose, and um, before we tackle the longer questions in the second section. Um, the second section, then part two, you get structured and essay questions. Uh, the first section is on physical geography. Mm-hmm. So you have three questions to choose from and you select one to do from there. Um, they're divided into A, B and C sections. Yeah, so we can get A's back is to, kind of more yeah, skill We'll go based. into that detail in a minute, but just give us that overview. So keep ploughing on there, section B and C. Yeah, sure. Um, so section B and C, you've got physical environment, you've got regional geography, uh, you've got the electives then, so the study of humans and population and economics and the such like. Then into the last section, you have the options section okay. where you talk about global interdependence, uh, ocean and environment, lots of different things. And um, that's the paper. And then, of course, you've got the fieldwork component as well to do with it. OK, now the fieldwork component, I know for many students that will be done at this stage. I gather they submit it in April. But this will give them a lot of you know nice points in the bags heading into the exam hall, shouldn't it? Well, yeah, it should do. I mean, it's worth 20% of their overall grade. When it's 500 marks in total, the fieldwork is worth 100 marks. So under the supervision of the teacher, if they're guided in the right way and do the correct topic and the correct detail with it, there's no um, reason to think that they shouldn't get anything shy of 18, 19 or even 20% itself. So it's nice to have that in the back pocket before you've even put pen to paper in June, I suppose. Gosh, certainly is. OK, well, let's go back into that more, drilling down a little bit more. You talked about part one having short questions. And I do laugh when teachers say, you know, oh, it's good, warms you up. I mean also terrifying because you have to be accurate right I mean at least with the longer answers you have a bit of a chance to have a bit of a run around but you have to be very precise in these short questions talk to me about the timings and what students should be looking at in that first part 
Sure. So, yeah, in the first part, you're right, accuracy is crucial, particularly in, in any section of the geography paper, accuracy is going to be important. Um, with the timings for the section, the very first section will be about 20 minutes long. You wouldn't want to be going over 20 minutes. Invariably, time is going to be tight on this exam. It is every single year. I see it every year with my own students uh, that the court for time, two hours and 50 minutes is very tight for time. You mightn't think it, it might sound a lot, but in the exam, you need every minute that you can get. So uh, with the short questions, the 12 questions that you have to answer 10 of, uh, should be about 20 minutes for that one, Evelyn, I would suggest. OK, so listen, you are convinced now that they'll have nailed that and moving into yeah. part two. And the idea, I suppose, is that, you know, you're, the stuff is starting to flow. You know, you've tapped into that bit in your brain, right? But this is tricky because you've timing issues here. There's a lot of content. When we talk about section one, they're going to be in C. Like, how should students structure that timing, in your view, to make the most of it and get the, to bag those marks because I think sometimes they can get bogged down can't they and sometimes it mightn't be worth the time move on move on you know Absolutely like I said to you the timing is going to be everything with this uh, in the longer sections the part two um, they are divided into A, B and C sections A is kind of more skills based mm-hmm. you could be able to draw a map or ask to draw a map or read an infographic or a body of text and decipher any sort of information from it and um, that should take about maybe nine minutes uh, eight to nine minutes, I would be suggesting. Then the B and C is more of an examination of a topic. So mm-hmm. with physical, it could be volcanoes or earthquakes or something along those lines. Those would want to be maybe a page and a half to two pages in the booklet, okay. which would take about 13, 14 minutes at a maximum. So the entire question, the entire long question should take no longer than 35 minutes, I would suggest. OK, so then moving on, you talked about, say, the second section to the third section. Can we just focus on that third section for a minute? Because it is elective, but it's attractive as a section. Oh, very much so. It's a very broad ranging one. They actually can do two questions from this section. Uh, It'll be uh, economic activity is the first section and then a study in human population dynamics in the second one. So it's very broad, but the timings will remain the same. It's still A, B and C divided up into. So nine minutes for A and then 13 minutes for B and C. So again, 35 minutes per question is what they should be looking and aiming to do and certainly not going over it because they will run out of time by the end if they do go over by five or even 10 minutes. And again, the duration, like how much am I writing here for this? Because that's one of those you could write forever. Yeah, I know it's very hard to count the words, but <laughs> my rough yardstick that I give my pupils, uh, the booklet pages have actually become smaller in recent years. Ooh. So whereby it was one page before, I've been now saying maybe a page and a half to two pages just to make sure. But I suppose you're looking to hit 15 SRPs or significant relevant points, Evelyn. So it's not exactly about the the, the, qual- the quantity, but maybe the quality of what you're actually writing. So if pupils can streamline and just knuckle down, to get down to the factual pieces of information, Uh, and hit all the notes on that, then they should be able to get full marks or a very high mark, certainly. Can you talk to me about this dilemma? And it's in other papers too, about turning it from an English essay into a geography answer. Like if you are running out of time and you just start throwing down your bullet points, your SRPs, like is that fine? Because you're not writing a novel. A lot of pupils do choose to go down the bullet point route. Um, that's both a good and a bad thing, I suppose. Yes, it does save time, but it also leaves you vulnerable to maybe leaving out key pieces of information that will need to be um, yeah. included as a factual piece of information. So whereby you can save time, it does run the risk of maybe not getting the full point across and attaining the highest marks that you possibly can. But it is a way a number of pupils do it, and not, even my, not only my own pupils in Middleton College, but other pupils that I've seen as well doing it um, from invigilating, that they tend to use the bullet point format. And even from my correcting... Uh, for correcting days there's a wide and broad range of different ways that pupils actually attack the different, the, these different questions Yeah but sometimes you know they um, the greatest laid plans then you get a punch in the face like you're in the geography exam and the, the clock is ticking you start throwing down your points you know that fourth uh-huh, section yeah. human environment fascinating uh, here but again what's your advice around students tackling this what, what should they be putting down on paper to get those marks well, ultimately, it's going to be doing with humans uh, and population and dynamics, mi- migration patterns, these kinds of things. I suppose kind of more contemporary issues tend to come in in this section, particularly mm-hmm. with um, uh, migration patterns we've seen recently from Ukraine or even from Gaza and Israel and, and things in Syria. So these things which have been happening over the, the course of the last couple of years um, can definitely be included into a question like this. But it'll definitely be on population dynamics, obviously, and things to do with humans, uh, humans moving urban settlement, urban change, all of these kinds of things. But contemporary issues within the last two or three years could definitely be included and more often than not are actually included in the geography paper. Mm, that feels like a very subtle hint there and we love those on Study Hub. <laughs> um, in terms of packing my bag going in, like what do you need extra or special in terms of getting ready to tackle the geography paper? What's on my to-do list? 
Well, I suppose the the basics will be your pens, your pencils, plenty of each, mm-hmm. uh, a ruler, and certainly a calculator to be brought in uh, into the exam, most definitely, and plenty of them. Um, that's really all you will need, I mean, in terms of stationery, but obviously just keep to your timings. That's going to be the crucial thing for a lot of kids. Guys, if you go even just five minutes over the first question, it'll have a knock-on effect later in the exam where you'll be caught for time by the end of it. I know. I mean, it doesn't matter what subject we're doing, that keeps coming up. Let it go. Move on to the next answer. If you've time, go mm. back. But, you know, that kind of approach is so clever. And again, the worry, and yeah. we had this in biology too, you know, that sense of people worrying that their drawing isn't so brilliant. What's your advice around oh, yes. that? Yeah, yeah. The messy artist. <laughs> Yeah, well, exactly. You don't have to be a Picasso or a Monet to get full marks really in it. As long as it's something legible, I suppose that Ireland does in fact look like Ireland. Okay. I did a class there at my 50th yesterday and some of the Ireland's were a bit questionable, but uh, we, 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 we've got a year to get that right. As long as it's accurate um, and they're labelled and clearly labelled and put a key on the bottom with your diagrams, it doesn't have to be anything magnificent. As long as it's labelled and accurate, that's all pupils need to do. But to not take a huge amount of time with them, because if you are to do a label diagram for a long question, for example, it will only be worth um, two marks or one SRP. So don't spend so long on them, but just a quick, accurate diagram for those particular questions would be sufficient. Can I end by asking you about the student who's looking at all the notes and looking at all the textbooks and going, I'm a bit overwhelmed. It's, you know, whatever amount of weeks away. How can you break that down? I mean, if you really want to get prepared, that sort of maybe H4, H3-ish type, H, you know, that kind of level. We know the H1s, right? We don't, I never worry about mm. the H1s. They're doing their own thing. But <laughs> for the rest of us, what is your advice in terms of tackling the paper and getting ready in terms of you know the preparations for those kinds of pupils I suppose I'd be suggesting to make sure that you learn the topics that you like because geography is a broad broad subject there's a topic in there that someone uh, some topic that's a, a, that everyone will like mm-hmm. so pick those topics that you like that you are good at that you seem to know a lot of and know them very very well and a H4 and H5 should not be too hard to attain in that and you never know they might even get higher but uh, prioritize what you do know uh, and make sure you know it in good detail and practice writing out answers and of course labelling and annotating diagrams is going to be significant too. Excellent. Listen, Andy, thank you so much for joining us with that information and that help and advice for the geography paper. Much appreciated. Right, Ryland Gugail got to some initial Gail got popper hand the ethnic coin from presentation college at the right. Oh, come the guy and the guy live on Shock and Carolyn ethnic four degree in Clor. Good Evelyn. Um, yes, come on. Listen, we are going to fly on with Pauper Hain, right? Because we know it's it's a busy paper. It's not so much of the writing, but technically it's demanding because obviously you've got your Clues Tishkent, you've got your Arrol, you've got your Ashta as well. And there's a lot of talk about the Ashta from students. So talk us through a little bit first about the paper for paper one. What is the format? What's the kind of structure that will be on the page for students? Okay, so you've closed Tishkins, first of all, um, at the beginning. of It's an afternoon exam now as well, so I suppose just to be aware of that and that they need to put all their effort into concentration and working right up until the end. Um, sometimes you can see that concentration lapses a little oh, bit yeah. during the course of the closed Tishkins, so it's very yeah. important to be really aware of that, that it is, you know, you do have to work at it. Um, so it's 6% of the overall paper, it's worth 60 marks and uh, of the overall exam, rather. And it takes between 25 and 30 minutes, roughly about 25 minutes so that would leave them with about an hour and 50 then for their ash to after that um, so the close Tishkins then is broken up into the three dialects and it's three Conowinti Conowins Ola Conowins Namun August Conowins Hunacht so it caters for all areas of the country or the Gaeltachti around the country um, and, and then there are you know particular aspects of it uh, repeat themselves again and again uh, the Agriach the Eichsul and the Fail to Eichsul the various festivals and organisations Gwailing Cumann um, Cumann of and Na Gwailtoch the Eich Sula Fail to the Pan Kjeltoch Fail a Pan Kjeltoch Mila Nish and uh, sporting um, activities or sporting uh, organisations and uh, sporting occasions that would be coming up in the Clio Olympic especially now would be topical this year as well Would it be that relevant to the, what's going on in the world today? Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the exams are set at a time where they are looking forward to, to to what's going on, you know. And we can see that the cultural aspect of the language is coming in more and more, really, you know. And that uh, would test whether they're on top of things or taking an interest in things through the media um, and the Irish media, uh, the Irish media aspects of the Irish media that they can avail of now, like Tourish Punkai and Reginald Wealth, obviously, but in a, in a pod 
much cruelty for it, and, you know, um, and that they're there for them to take advantage of and to keep on top of things in terms of what's happening and what's uh, what's current in Kursi Raha. Brilliant. OK, well, let's look, let's plow on then with Cuid Don Capadort, Cade, Mark and Shaw, I think. And there's a choice there between the different kind of genres, right? But you are yeah. going to tell me that regardless of what you're writing, Crinis and the Gael get never take your eye off that, that it's about that Crinis, that that's such an important part of this. It is, yeah, your 100 marks there again. And it is a very important part of the paper. Everybody, you know, worries about the Ashta. Um, and certainly it is worth focusing on and making sure that you're fully prepared for it. But the first step you must take is to is to pick the genre and pick the title mm-hmm. that best suits you. Um, and sometimes people can be negligent in that respect. You know, uh, 20 of your minutes, 20 minutes should be spent on planning your essay, therefore, and making sure that you're comfortable and that you have enough 20 material. minutes. It's worth um, that much to spend that much time on the, oh, the yeah, prep of definitely. it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because that's going to make or break you and you don't want to be halfway through this aspect of the paper, this feature in the paper and realise you've made the wrong choice or that mm. you've left out um, a section of the title as well. And that's very important also that you deal with every aspect of the title. For instance, if it's on Sion Kuravina, Gnamal, Hoshiel, Terrina, you can't uh, write something that's learnt rota uh, or that's wrote learned and learnt off by heart. It's a glam yeah. um, If it isn't, uh, connecting to the title that's very very important I liked your example about Sconel's sport because you know we were talking about the fact that sometimes students are going to have a whole bank of vocabulary ready for sport but they haven't looked at what the context is of the sport and that can trip you up Absolutely yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, to follow that formula that you must always connect with the title of the essay and, you know, a go hakes on sports or a go hakes in the scandals of sports or Maiderlin of scandals of sports. And then be careful also because you're de- you're plowing into the Tishil Genizach there. So Krinius of Severus, Nagelia, always on the lookout to improve your vocabulary in terms of the the glue shuan and Linatimi Aixula, you know, the, the vocabulary associated with the various themes that you can constantly be working working on that but certainly paragraph one and your conclusion can be pre-prepared and with a little bit of tweaking you can change the essay title or include the essay title or the theme of the essay that you've chosen in that. Yeah, and the, I mean, yeah, yeah. I was interested what you were saying that it's very topical. I mean, when you look at themes that students could be planning, you know, we know like course and that kind of thing. What kind of other themes would you throw onto a list for a student to consider? Well, we're knocking on the door of Forigan and Kurloch for a long time now. But, you know, again, to be, you know, to realise that, as we said last year, that there is something there. They are being, you know, they're giving them a broad choice and mm-hmm. to recognise your title, that your title is there someplace, you know. So, for instance, uh, if you had something prepared in Kinney, it was racism, for, for instance, that you can see it in Inner America, immigration, mm-hmm. others five Nizefoch or Kesh yeah, Nizefoch, more appropriately, I should say. Uh, but, you know, Sochi Nahir and also there as well as Chi Will Shagahru Agus Na Tiunkur Ta Eg Na Na Rudi Shows Na Kunila Fasha these the effects on society you know um, and uh, technoliot there as well and the whole the, the the jargon associated with technoliot particularly as well is always uh, it's always evolving you have words like Tiunkuri influencers you know and they have a word that's going out for influencers news. wow we've come to yeah, this Tiunkur, yeah well so but it would make sense now it's not a bad one no so they, are they great but did you say Chun Hori. If I'm an influencer, yeah, it's Chun Hori yeah. May. There you go. Yeah. It's a new well, job title. Chun Hori, the roads have you an impact or an effect. So the Chun Hori then are the influencers, you know? <laughs> um, Love it. Yeah, so it's an amuse idea, I would say, a thing that I struggled with there a while ago, uh, <laughs> username and so on. You know, all of those terminology, that terminology is, is growing and constantly evolving. So it's a calm scheme I heard in a, a recent uh, mock paper as well, which are scams. You know, give me that um, again. What's a scam? Then associated calm scheroch. See, calm being crooked and scheroch the scheming. So crooked scheming as if there were any other type. But that's a scam anyway. I've used that or I've heard that in close. So it hits see, me. Lahai, you know? so, calm scheme horoch. Would that be correct? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, oh gosh. 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 Oh gos
You're structuring well, a, a bold opening paragraph, as I said, and then that is uh, you can manipulate or mould that in terms of what title that you're going to use or choose there, what theme you're going to be working with. But if you aren't a um, confident a bold, Glencore, right? And I mean, the essay, the you know, students say it to me, it's something that's really in their heads, right? Like, how many words are they looking for? Like, if you're trying to maybe aim for that H5, H4 or, you know, whatever, what what's your advice around that? Well, five to six hundred words you're being asked to prepare. So that's roughly about two full scat pages in, okay. in old language. Okay. Um, but then for anybody who's aiming for higher than that, a H3 uh, and above would, would be expected to write more than that. And they would feel the need to write more mm. than that anyway, you know, to fully explore or discuss um, whatever theme they've chosen, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, again, you can have a generic opening, uh, an opening uh, paragraph in terms of, you know, Thakil Chiani Chialgus is the Gourmet, and using the unhopful rather than the untalt ta that you use is, it's superior, you know. So is Kesht Achronach, is Kesht Himuli, so it's an interesting question. Kesht the ta Lekloshkal Gominix the Melon, and, you know, various things like that are, are generic and you can use them, but make sure that the Krinus Nogelga is, is there to mm. be seen, you know, um, because you'll have an awful lot of the Tishul Guinness out there and to have your animal to the noun um, agreeing with the adjective there, where there's Boninchkinoch or Fierinchkinoch, and that's pretty basic, you know, and the Amshery then as well, you know, that you'd have uh, decided what tense you're going to be writing in, of yep. course, if you can show off the Mokunilach, but again, they're generic, you know, Domain Imara Edrish, if I were, you know, Churingis Muinish Tiachta. I would put more in investment in this scenario, Sean, and so on. So again, they can be used in your in your paragraph someplace along the way. So it is it's it's impressive if you can do that. But they are flexible insofar as that you can use them in a lot of different contexts. And finally, then the close tishkent, like What can I do to get ready for the close tishkent so that it's really sharp? Well, clachtu yin smosh throughout the smurder as I said, uh, they are becoming quite topical. They're they're slipping in topical um, features of Irish culture. They're as I said, you know, and uh, Sean Uckle can be heard there again. But because now heretofore, by the time you're going to be doing this, you will have done your school of kindsa. Mm-hmm. So you'll have actually prepared a lot of this. And your Sean Uckle, I'd be very surprised if you wouldn't have Sean Uckle prepared for um for going into your screw the kinds and um, therefore you can you can bring those in again or you may hear those again in the close dishkins um, and again very similar to the essay themes you will have on simple uh, you will have in the five and the the yoga a lot about edicus as well and the the coursey hagans nice because the coursey thar falls the whole skin the excellent simple uh policy uh aggregate the excellent will bind up with the the various organisations that are connected with dolchan king or kirkan king in the as well, the development of Irish. Inta, listen, as always, I think we and the good girl go all and And to finish with the Sean Uckel, Evelyn, clock to begin small strokes, you know. <laughs> well, indeed, that old chestnut hasn't changed. Listen, Gormila Margot, that's a coin, as Gail. Thank you so much great. for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, Well, we are now joined in studio by the career guidance guru, really, in some ways. People would say Brian Mooney. Brian joins me now to talk about what's next, because when this part of your exam life is over, you then move on to the next part, which is the fun part. And at this stage of the school year, students are starting to get their mock results. And for some of you, you may feel these results are a bit of a wake up call or reality check. But we're going to discuss all this with Brian and the implications of that. Brian, you're very welcome to the studio. Thank you. Evelyn. Pleasure to have you. So let's start with the mocks because, <coughs> you know, students are you know in the middle of an hour, reeling yeah. or not or whatever. How useful, in your opinion, are the mocks? What are the benefits that they offer students now? The biggest benefit of the mocks, Devlin, is as a learning experience. I mean, these students, they didn't do the junior cert. So still, they we're still dealing with that. Isn't yeah, that incredible? they have no experience of a formal exam. So no matter how much of a bags you make of the mocks, yeah. great. Every mistake you made, wonderful, because you're making it in the mocks and you learn from that. And you learn, I'm not going to do that in June. Mm -hmm. And if you're sitting in the middle of a mock paper and you're going, geez, I wish I had, remember that and write it down when you get out because that shouldn't happen to you in June. So the mock is an opportunity to make every mistake you possibly can. The results don't matter a damn, basically, bluntly. Mm. Ultimately, it's about how much you've learned from it. And if you are reading comments from the teachers who mark the mocks and you're seeing a pattern... What's that telling you about how maybe you need to change your approach that you were planning? 
unless your teacher says to you, I think you should change level or drop down, don't. Purely well, on the basis of the marks. you know, at home and your mother's friend up the road and yeah. dad will have an opinion about you dropping levels. Yes. Right. This is where that conversation starts to get real. Right. You're very strong on this. You're like, it's you and the teacher. That is the conversation. Absolutely. Do not let others in. Absolutely. Okay. B- because ultimately, I mean, for instance, we often in the past saw lots of people dropping down, say, from higher level maths yes. to ordinary level maths, you know. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, if you get 40% in higher level maths, you get 71 points in the CEO. If you get 100% on ordinary, you get 56. So it's a really significant decision. And even if you drop below 40 to, to say, 35, you still pass so long as you get the H... Um, seven, isn't it? Yeah. The, the, the 30% to 40%. That's as worth the same as an O3 on ordinary level. So really think through if you're thinking and talk yeah. to your teachers. Don't be doing it spontaneously and certainly don't do it at the last minute. Panic as you go into the exam in June. Yeah, you always hear those stories, don't you? Now, Brian, you and I have had many conversations we over have. the years about the CAO in particular and that's what I was going to say. The CAO was the be-all and end-all. If you didn't get your choice, you were really mm. hamstrung. Mm-hmm. But you have wonderful news. Like this, is, there's been a revolution really in this approach for students, you know, in terms of what's next after the Leaving Cert. They have so many pathways and you've been banging this drum for years and it's true. There is nobody sitting in the Leaving Cert who may have a dream or ambition which is realistic who can't actually follow that. I can show you a pathway into so many things. I'm leaving here now to chair a board of management meeting in the Further Education College in St. Organ and I will be chairing it in Blackrock within a week or two. We have students coming into us who get modest Leaving Certs who can do a pre-law Mm-hmm. level five, a pre-business level five mm-hmm. or pre-science out in Bray and they can go into law in UCD, commerce in UCD, best in Trinity, science in UCD or whatever because the PLC is a route into the, the actual round of offers that takes place in early August every year that isn't part of the CO yes. point system and if you do well in your PLC in your specialist area away you go. Even if you aren't doing a PLC, since last September we've had a new tertiary degree programme which Minister Simon Harris introduced and I had the honour to launch last summer and with that you can now have a list of degree courses where it doesn't even look at your leaving cert, it looks at your life experience to date and in areas such as business, nursing, engineering, construction, music and sound production, software development. Okay, the list goes on. In 2024, if you're interested in any of those, go to the National Tertiary Office NTO.ie and you will see those courses and you can apply and you can bypass the CO point system. Last year we had 60 students who started in nursing up in the northwest under the tertiary programmes yep. and they are, will have their nursing degree. It will take them five years instead of four but ultimately once they were admitted in without points away they go. Well we have would you believe a little clip to illustrate this exciting news. 500 places are available on 23 courses via the National Tertiary Office website. These courses are available for everybody, for the school leavers, the lifelong learners, those who want to return to to study, upskill or reskill. There you go. That was the exciting news a year ago when all this was launched. Now, let's keep moving here. Other pathways are, and you've been talking about this for years, go, use your EU status. Absolutely. As an EU citizen, an Irish student can apply to any country in the EU and has to be treated the same as a domestic student. And in Europe now, not necessarily to look after the Irish, but because they see it having an advantage for their own students, a lot of degree courses are taught through English. And because there are over a thousand of these courses, you can now apply for them and say, for instance, let's take an example like physiotherapy. Physiotherapy in Ireland, because again, a shortage of places, etc. Probably around 530, 40 points at the moment. And you can go with 350 points or whatever, go to one of the four Dutch universities offering physiotherapy. And because it is European, obviously it must be reciprocally recognised in Ireland. And therefore, if you get a degree course in another European university, you can come and practice in Ireland. So effectively, if there's any area, whether it's going to Italy to do medicine, whether it's going to Budapest to do veterinary, whether it's going to the Dutch university to do international relations or physio or psychology dentistry or whatever. Dentistry we hear about as well. Dentistry People as well. Spain, yeah. yeah. It's all there. It's all there. Now, so, This is saying to you, there is nothing you might like to do that if you don't look at the options. So you could be there in August and you could be looking at a level eight CO offer, a level seven, six CO offer, a PLC offer or a number of PLC offers, a national tertiary offer, 
or an offer from um, one of the European universities. So you could have about six choices at the end of August when you get your Leaving Cert results. Wow, it's, it is. It is. And really pick the one that's the most appropriate to you no, at that stage. Really wonderful. But the other thing that's happened to this generation, we've mentioned the fact that they haven't done a formal exam with the junior cert. They also have seen their predecessors, right? The COVID mm. leaving certs. Yes. And the fact that these students have maybe benefited from a generous approach to the whole system, really, the grading system, which has caused people would say the CA points to increase substantially. So this year's lot, I kind of feel sorry for them, or should they? Like, are they in competition with last year's lot? Where are they in terms of that? Okay, there's about 80,000 applicants to the CAO every year and about 50,000 of them are current year's leaving certs. About 15,000 of them would be the last two to three years and maybe another... 9,000 now from other European countries. My goodness, that number is rising, it's isn't right, it? It's because of Brexit. Because so they of, might have gone to the UK. They would have gone to the UK but previously, now they're but now they're here. international students in the UK, 30, 40,000 ahead, too expensive. They can come to here and pay our registration charge. So it's so, going both ways. We're so going over there and they're coming they're back. They're coming okay. over here, exactly. Now, if you are a student doing the Demon Cert this year, you are probably aware there's about 15,000 students who will have the higher marks that were awarded through the way we've done the Leaving Cert system for the last three to four years. I know that last year, Minister Norma Foley was very concerned that the students would not be disadvantaged Mm -hmm. and therefore she instructed the officials and the State Exams Commission to ensure that the grades in 2023 Mm -hmm. were similar to 22, 21 and 20. Now, we are facing into this summer no decision has been formally announced, but in this, which is an election year in Europe and possibly in general mm. election here, a local election, I do not think that any minister is going to put 60,000 students at a disadvantage to last year's student. So some way will be found to adjust the grades. This that is are, the gliding they were talking about. Yeah, they were they talking didn't about want gliding. To, they didn't want a sudden falling off the cliff that yeah. went back to it. So they're talking about possible glide over five years. But the bottom line is, if you are a student, do not be concerned because politically there is no way you can be seen to suffer because there are 15,000 students out there who are applying to the CEO this year who have had points that have been enhanced over the last three to four years. Talking about that enhancement, I mean, the stats are interesting when we look at the CA points because 6 to 5 used to be this extraordinary goal for yeah, people. Yeah, a couple of hundred points. people in the country I mean, a, six, a 500 point leaving cert is off the charts in my view. Yes. It's an extraordinary leaving cert. What do we know about what's happened over the last few years? Because there has been an increase in those top points. Well, because of enhanced grades or because of calculated grades or adjusted grades for the last two years, you would have found that in the past there might be around 250 people who would have got the 625. That's now up around 12 to 1,400 people. And again, over 600, there was probably about a 1,200 people going back to 2019. There are three to 4,000 of those people now. Okay. So you had a situation for the last number of years where you had the ludicrous situation where you got 625 points in your leaving search. You couldn't get another point. And you'd applied to Econ Finance and UCD or you'd applied to Dentistry in Trinity or Dentistry in Cork. And suddenly on the day of the offers, you didn't get an offer because because there were actually more people on 625 than there were actually places on the course. Like little now asterisks that, meant we are now into yes. random selection. So in other words, we ended up in a situation where you literally had random selection for for a course where every single person getting in had 625 six and there were some people who had 625 who'd applied for it who didn't get in, which was farcical. So and we've had that. What more can you ask a, a student to do? Just very quick rapid fire questions yeah. for you. My favourite course has gone up in points. So should I change my choices or stick to my original dream and see what happens? What you should do is reflect upon all the options you have, finish the Leaving Cert in around the 20, 21st of June, then look at all of the um, stuff that you've gathered together and reflect over that last week before the 1st of July deadline and consider what is the one you, in your gut you genuinely want. Presuming, obviously, that you've done the right subjects in terms of minimum entry requirements and at the right levels and all that sort of thing. But go for the one in your gut and get, put that down as your number one. Always put your dream course down as number one and always make sure that by number 10 you have the banker in case the exams don't go exactly as you're hoping. My parents think I'm mad, but I think I could do stuff like Instagram, digital marketing, content creation, all that. Are there real courses now? There's this? a new course down in IT, but it was IT Carlo, and it's now the University of Carlo, and that is in this whole area. So if you want to be an influencer, go to the um, University of Carlo website and you will see this new course, which is there for 2024. OK, explain the value of an arts degree. My father is suspicious. 
what do we go to university for? We go either for an apprenticeship in areas like medicine, dentistry, veterinary, or we go for a general education in which we learn to self-manage our own learning, which is what university is about. And we come out of that with a set of skills. An arts degree gives you those skills. It gives you the skills to manage information over a three to four year period and learn all of the skills that you need. So when an employer is looking at you in three to four years, they can see that you manage through geography or politics or economics and that if you have those skills, you can transfer them to the role that you will be looking to do in the job. So ultimately, it's not about a specific skill set associated with the subjects. It's the generic skills that you get through managing your way through a four, three or four year university degree. I loved my arts degree. Now, moving on Fabulous. then, <laughs> CAO applicants, we can, you can change your mind at any time. How often should I do this or should I hold off until my exams are over? There's no point in changing your mind at the moment because it will cost you a tenner up to the 1st of March. The only people who should do that is somebody who has forgotten to put in a restricted application course. Yes, because they're against the clock. In a they're against way. the clock. Yeah. Now, so if you have done your list of courses, the only thing you need to worry about now is if you're a here or dare applicant, by the 1st of March, you must do the online bit of that. Okay. And the paperwork must be in Galway in the office by the 15th of March. Other than that, if you're not here or there, yep. forget about it. Of course, you're thinking and reflecting about the course you might do. But ultimately, the CAO will open up your course choice options in the first week of May and you have two entire months including about 10 days after your last paper to actually reflect upon the list. So, Wait till that period of time. Everybody does nowadays and go in, look at the options you have. You have 10 choice at level okay. 8, 10 choice at level 7, 6. Make sure to use your options fully so that when you get to August, you have the widest range of choice available, both within the CAO and through other options like PLCs, tertiary degrees, degrees abroad or whatever. OK, Brian, thank you for coming with such a positive, actually, uplifting message for us. I think it's a really good message for students at this point in their studies. But that's our lot for this week on Study Hub. Next week, we'll be focusing on English Paper 2. What poets will come up? We don't know, but we'll help you. Uh, we'll also be doing chemistry. You can check out our social feeds for more tips and help. And this and all so much more is on our home site here at RTE Learn. Please go to RTE Learn. There's so much there for you. But until the next episode, Slonga Foyle.